The latest Fantastic Beasts film might just hold more secrets than Dumbledore himself. Do you want to learn more about the Deluminator or clever references to the previous films? Keep watching to see the small details you missed in Fantastic Beasts – The Secrets of Dumbledore. What is a wizard to do without a bird to save the day? Go back to 2002 when Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets premiered. Fans had just met Dumbledore's Phoenix Fox, who played a significant role in Harry destroying Tom Riddle's diary and saving Ginny. Fox carrying Harry, Ron, Ginny, and even Lockhart out of the chamber even made it onto the cover of the American version of the book. Now, with the events of The Secrets of Dumbledore, phoenixes are more integral to the plot than ever. However, it's not a phoenix that offers the Chamber of Secrets Easter egg. Toward the beginning of the movie, Newt faces off against Grindelwald's followers. Mirroring the Fox scene from decades later, a dragon-like creature called a wyvern flies Newt, his suitcase, and his beasts away from the area as it puffs up like a dragon pufferfish. It's a significant homage to Fox, who might just be Credence's phoenix. There's no denying that Sirius Black is one of the greatest characters to appear in the Harry Potter books and films, but he's also deeply misunderstood. Here's a man who's had his reputation obliterated by a supposed friend and was tortured in Azkaban for 12 years. Yet despite his deep trauma and the overwhelming depression he sometimes faces, Sirius Black still manages to be a good person. We've all got both light and dark inside us. What matters is the part we choose to act on. But between his wisdom and sadness, Sirius has an unparalleled zest for life and an infectious yearning for mischief. He's everything Grindelwald could be if he wanted, but the budding dictator chooses to kill people instead. Much of the third Harry Potter book and movie hinges on the manhunt for Sirius, with Hogsmeade, Diagon Alley, and Hogwarts littered with moving wanted posters. Now, The Secrets of Dumbledore is giving fans deja vu with Grindelwald's snowy Hogsmeade wanted signs. However, Grindelwald is exonerated for the crimes he committed, while Sirius must go into hiding until his death. Even in the wizarding world, life isn't fair. Who needs flying cars when you can have magical trains? Some of the secrets of Dumbledore references to Harry Potter are pretty on the nose, but it doesn't make them any less charming. While the Wizarding World films often focus on the beauty of humanity, they also encourage fans to appreciate the breathtaking beauty around them in nature. The idea for the Hogwarts Express came to J.K. Rowling as she rode on the very train that inspired her to write Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. And in its way, the Express gives new students to Hogwarts a glimpse of magic before they even raise their wands for the first time. The Secrets of Dumbledore had a similar idea, when Newt's ragtag group of misfits meet on a train while it flies through snowy mountains. It may be a fairly plain-looking train, but the homage to the Hogwarts Express is palpable. Dumbledore is known for his sage wisdom, and even 50 years younger than his first appearance in the Harry Potter universe, he doesn't disappoint. The future headmaster has gone through more than a few internal struggles and successfully fought off a lingering thirst for power. With or without you, I'll burn down their world. Dumbledore has long since ditched the for the greater good mantra he lived by in his time with Grindelwald, but he still occasionally falls into that mentality. The most devastating example of this kind of lapse is his secretive training of Harry to prepare him to take down Voldemort. He went through with this risky plan knowing full well that Harry might not survive the conflict. Despite his many flaws, Dumbledore gives Harry some food for thought after Cedric's Goblet of Fire death. Dark and difficult times lie ahead. Soon we must all face the choice between what is right and what is easy. Of course, he's had a long time to perfect this sentiment between the events of The Secrets of Dumbledore and Goblet of Fire. He gives Newt a similar message to relay to Vogel, who holds Grindelwald's fate in his hands. So what's the message? Do what is right, not what is easy. Later, answering the question of why Grindelwald can run for Supreme Mugwump despite being a wannabe dictator, Dumbledore says, because Vogel chose easy over right. Apparently, Dumbledore was a bit pithier in his youth, but the sentiment is the same. In The Deathly Hollows, Grindelwald and Dumbledore's previous obsession with the fabled relics of the Peveril brothers comes to light. Not only was Grindelwald on the hunt for the Elder Wand, the Invisibility Cloak, and the Resurrection Stone, but Dumbledore found himself on this quest for power as well. Until this point in the series, Grindelwald's Hollows obsession goes relatively unmentioned, beyond the reveal that he obtained the Elder Wand from esteemed wand maker Grigorovich. Yet it looks like the Hollows may play a greater role in Grindelwald's continued quest for domination over the Muggle world. In The Secrets of Dumbledore, fans learn that each wizard running for Supreme Mugwump has a symbol associated with them. Wizards cast their vote for the next leader by firing off their nominee's symbol from their wand. In a blink-and-you'll-miss-it scene, it's clear that the Deathly Hollow symbol inspired Grindelwald's mark. The Hollow symbol lies in the middle of two Gs, with a more pronounced Elder Wand nestled distinctly in the middle. Along with the Hollow's reference, the symbol is eerily similar to the Death Eater's dark mark, right down to the lime green color. 
Though attacked by his werewolf professor and discovering that his best friend was sleeping with a 40-year-old rat, Harry's most traumatic experience in The Prisoner of Azkaban might be when his Care of Magical Creatures book tries to eat him. When the students call out Hagrid for his bizarre choice of biting books, the giant defends himself. He calls the books cute and instructs the students to stroke the spine to prevent their textbook from attacking. As it turns out, the Wizarding World isn't quite finished with the Monster Book of Monsters. When Dumbledore's army sets off to confuse Grindelwald and get the chillin to the election, all but one group member carries a bewitched suitcase that looks like Newt's. Amongst other things, one has a golden snitch, another has pastries, and yet another melts. Of course, there's also one with colorful textbooks. Some of the titles include Sonnet of a Sorcerer, which jinxes readers into speaking in limericks forever. Then there's Have a Fiesta in a Bottle and Extreme Incantations. But alongside the colorful creations is the dreaded The Monster Book of Monsters, which means that Harry's textbook is quite old. It may have even been released before Newt's book Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. If there's one thing the Fantastic Beast series doesn't need, it's romanticizing Severus Snape's creepy behavior toward Lily Potter. In Deathly Hollows, fans learn about Snape's obsessive love for Lily through Snape's memories. Sure, Snape turned his back on Voldemort, but only after the dictator killed Lily. Snape was fine with her family getting killed as long as she survived. Snape's pining over the woman who turned him down decades ago is endless and ridiculous, to the point where he bullies her child just because Harry looks like James. When Dumbledore asks if he loves Lily after all this time, the potions master responds, Always. This is stalker behavior, but even Harry himself romanticizes Snape's actions when he names his second son Albus Severus. In The Secrets of Dumbledore, following the reveal that Credence is Aberforth's son, it's unclear why Aberforth never bothered to look for him. When Credence finally meets Aberforth, he asks, Did you ever think of me? Paying homage to Snape, Aberforth says, Always. Aberforth tells Credence to come home, only taking responsibility as a father when his son is dying, and there's nothing that can save him. In some ways, Snape and Aberforth are alike, and not in good ways. There's no better title for the third installment of the Fantastic Beasts series than The Secrets of Dumbledore. It turns out the future headmaster of Hogwarts is harder to read than a hexed poetry book. His instinct is to keep everything to himself until the moment when he needs his allies' help. Dumbledore's got a real checkered history of being able to encourage people to do crazy things. The upshot of this is that he has a wealth of knowledge about the wizarding world that he keeps quiet, along with more than a few wickedly powerful gadgets that he either procured or created himself. One such gadget takes the form of a stopwatch. The first Harry Potter book describes it as, A very odd watch. It had 12 hands but no numbers. Instead, little planets were moving around the edge. Dumbledore uses it to tell time, and it makes an appearance in the first and fifth books. However, it never shows up on screen until The Secrets of Dumbledore. Here, Dumbledore clearly uses the pocket watch to find Credence's location, and he has a picture of the wizard on the stopwatch. It's no surprise that the mysterious-looking watch would have a use beyond telling time, but it's unclear if it works to track down just anyone or if it's a Dumbledore heirloom specifically made to keep tabs on his bloodline. Either way, it's fun to see an aspect of the book come to life on screen for the first time. The Wizarding World is chock full of secret passageways and unique ways that the magical community separates their world from the Muggles. For instance, Hogwarts has a protection spell that causes Muggles to see a danger sign atop ruins. When it comes to the entrance to Diagon Alley, Hagrid shows Harry how to enter without apparating or using flu powder. He simply taps a combination of bricks, and the wall opens up. We haven't seen this method of entry in any other magical location since then, but The Secrets of Dumbledore brings it back when Dumbledore's original army goes to the German Ministry. The bricks are just a tad bit sleeker, but the process is the same. Cockroach clusters are peanut-type candy made of, you guessed it, cockroaches. The bizarre treats are purchased more often to troll unsuspecting Hogwarts classmates than to actually eat and enjoy. Ron fails to trick Fred into eating them, and as it turns out, the Slytherins in The Secrets of Dumbledore have a similar idea. When Jacob hangs out in the Great Hall, some nice Slytherins offer him candy. After Dumbledore declares that he never cared much for cockroach clusters, Jacob glares at the mischievous Slytherins. Despite Dumbledore's distaste for cockroach clusters and earwax birdie bots, he chooses cockroach clusters as a password for his office about 50 years later. Maybe he just misses his muggle friend. Movie fans were introduced to the world of Harry Potter when Dumbledore used his Deluminator, a light-sucking magical object of his own making, to darken Privet Drive. For a while, it seemed like the object's only use was to suck up and release the light from various light sources. Then, in the Deathly Hollows, Ron inherits the Deluminator from Dumbledore. Not only does the object control light sources, but it seems to be a listening device, too. 
As Iran bails on Harry and Hermione during their Horcrux search, he hears snippets of conversations from the object when Harry and Hermione mention his name. Even weirder, it acts like a port key to apparate Ron back to his friends when he realizes leaving was a mistake. So I took it, clicked it, and this tiny ball of light appeared. The full extent of the Deluminator's powers is never fully explored in the original books and movies, but the secrets of Dumbledore provide some insight into the device's capabilities. Dumbledore uses it in his battle with Credence and later Grindelwald, where the object does something very peculiar. It seems like the Deluminator takes both sets of dueling wizards to a parallel plane adjacent to the real world, but it looks like a darker mirrored version. It seems like people on the physical plane can't see what happens during this duel. However, one thing's for sure, the Deluminator has quite a few tricks up its sleeve, and so does Dumbledore. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite movies and TV shows are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.